Alrighty, so we've been doing a lot of simulation and theory, but on Monday, we're actually going to start building and testing things. And this is where it can get a little bit difficult because there's many ways to lay out a circuit, which means there's many ways to get it uh, wrong. And so then you really need to know the theory to to debug your circuit because nobody intentionally lays out a circuit incorrectly um, and you're looking at some behavior and the, sometimes that behavior can uh, indicate what the issue is. Right. Okay. So really, it, unless you make something, it, it's not real. And sure, there's a lot of uh, research that you can do in simulations. Um, for instance, I use a tool that it, you check your process recipe on how to make transistors before you make them. Where you, you know, you, and then rather than mixing flour and putting it in, a, in an oven at 350 for you know 30 minutes, you clean a wafer in this kind of chemical and stick it in a furnace for 30 minutes at 950 degrees C. The thing is, is though that simulation only works because somebody's done the experimentation to find out, um, you know, calibrated what happens when you put a wafer in a furnace for 30 minutes at 950 degrees C. And another thing about reality, and it's gonna sound like I'm, I'm talking about a mistake, is that reality takes into account everything, where simulations only take into account simulations. So in our LT spice simulations, um, what it doesn't take into account is that the resistors can heat up and thus change their value of resistance as the current is flowing through them, right? Um, it doesn't take into account how long a wire is, right? It doesn't take into account that, um, you know, a microwave is sending electromagnetic noise next to your circuit. So I had some uh, senior project students and when we entered the shutdown, I immediately grabbed an, you know, the test equipment and drove it down to Gilroy for the students to pick up. And their project was supposed to take brain waves, which were at one frequency, change their frequency so that you could actually listen to them. Part of the, in the process of getting that to work, they did their circuit and they're testing it. But what they found out is that it was receiving a radio station. That's not going to happen in simulation. So now while one doesn't want to receive a radio station when you're trying to listen to brain waves, that kind of experience and avoiding that kind of noise issue is really important. And um, oh, now after the fact, I could go figure out how to add that simulation and find out what went wrong. But really reality is reality and you tend to have to sell reality. All right, so bear with me if you already know what I'm talking about, but we're gonna be using a protoboard and this one is maybe a little shorter than yours and some things to think about is that you have all these holes, right? And all of these holes are connected to one wire. So if you put something in that hole, it'll be connected to anything else along that line. Same with this and same with these two on the bottom where anything in here will be connected, anything here will be connected, but these holes, this length of holes and these length of holes are not connected. Now, in 98, we use a strip board for soldering, but it's the same pattern, except I've got an extra layer of longitudinal holes. 
um, and I got these little holes in between. But when you flip it over, you can see there's these copper lines running. And so there's copper lines running in here as well. Now, these are five holes that are all connected together in parallel with five holes in parallel and parallel. Now, this batch of holes is not connected to those batch of holes. Now, I couldn't, I didn't have enough money to get everybody a soldering iron um, to ship out to you. It, it really would have been a lot better to use a, a strip board and soldering things because it doesn't wiggle, it lasts, and you could even take it to job interviews. I know a lot of people like these proto boards because they say they're faster, but what happens is, is a lot of people think, oh, it's just easy to plug it in and plug it out, so therefore I don't need to plan. Uh, so if you do have a soldering iron and all that and you know how to use it, yeah, go for it. But you need one of these, which I didn't send. All right. But I, um, and I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know where you live, right? But if you're in San Jose area, there's a place called Anchor Electronics and you can go pick them up. They're open. I just have to say, there's a certain person in there that will talk your ear off. So you really want to go in, get what you're getting, and then, and then head out. Um, but chances are you will meet your fellow students there. So it's a real cool thing, all right? And what I'm about to tell you, though, will work for the uh, solder board, the solderless boards and these solder boards. It's, the, it's almost the exact same pattern. What's its name? Oh, the information of the store is at the end of this talk. And these notes are online right now. So you need to plan your layouts ahead of time rather than just sticking it in. Now, I'm going to use this, these uh, pictures here, which represents this board which also can represent this proto board because it's the same pattern and it's just easier to draw on things. But basically the parts will go on top. All right. So what I want to do is let's just do So a voltage source has two ports and, and these things, you don't really have to draw. Oop, that's a little bit off. All right, I mean, here's my rendition of a nine volt battery, right? With plus or minus. <laughs> Fry's electronics, uh, I had bad experience in there. Sorry, that's why I'm laughing. All right, so the thing is, is really, uh, all I do is I just redraw the symbol of the battery, right? Because I know that's going to be some external thing. And this will be, actually, we won't be using a battery. We will be using the ADLM 2000 kit to supply voltage. All right. And you're not actually going to do this example because it's, it's rather simple. Now resistors, right? I have pictures of them later if you have never seen it, but you can, you can just draw it like that and just call it an R or you can try to use the symbol. All right. So anyway, you can see these black lines and that means it's a piece of copper and it's connected. All right, so a lot of times what we do is you'll do a kind of do this and set one thing 
to positive, right? And then the other line to negative. Now this whole rail is positive and that whole rail is negative. Now this is an actual physical thing. Now anytime I connect a wire here, I'm connecting it to the positive side. And anytime I connect um, the, anything to this rail, it goes to the negative. All right, and I'm gonna change colors. All right. So the resistor, I, I'm gonna say I have an example. I can put in one end of the resistor here, right? And then put one end of the resistor here. So that's one and two. But now look at what I've kind of made it a, a mistake on purpose. Well, I need a wire to go from here to here or to here to here, but I haven't left myself a hole, all right? So this is where I would find out this mistake when I went to try to connect. this to here and they're like, oh, now I got to go around and then it starts looking ugly. All right. So actually I'll just, God, that is annoying. I'll put a wire here, right? And then the resistor will go. And there's a reason why I do it like that instead of straight across and I'll explain that in a second. Then I can add my resistor. Right. And green. Oops. All right. And so there's, there's like a plan. Sure. This battery is coming from the ADLM 2000 kit and there's specific channels that you would pull that off of. All right. But then there's a wire that goes into the protoboard here and then on the negative side, all right? Rather than doing that kind of messy thing, I have a wire come here to this resistor. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm erasing. That was a laser pointer. <sighs> Sorry guys, really don't like PowerPoint. All right. All right, current comes through here. These are all connected, comes in through the negative side. And so notice over here, I have this length of wire, but really it doesn't exist. That's just, there's no resistance from here to here. It's only large so that we can see it. And then here we got what you think of as a wire, but really it's not. This doesn't exist, it's just a connection but these are physical wires with physical lengths, all right? Now, here's the thing. If we go to the net, so see how I, we had the battery here and the resistor on top on the first leg. And here we have a resistor on the second leg. It's really the same circuit. Just because there's a, a longer wire of zero resistance doesn't make any difference. These two things make one loop regardless. So I'm not, I'm not gonna redraw it, but this layout would be good for this layout. 
And additionally, it'd be good for that layout as well. Although that is a bit weird to draw it that way. All right. Now, something else is ground. I didn't really draw ground. Ground would come, ground is just a fancy name for one node where you're just assuming that'll be at zero volts. But no, no one point is ever anything in voltage. Voltage is always something between two points. In LT spice, you need a ground because everything is done with everything is measured with respect to it. So volt one, node one is one to ground. This node is two to ground. You just don't say it. Now, yeah, um, on the ADLM kit, there are two ground channels, but that's really just one side of the the voltage supply. All right. Even though I drew it differently, this is still equivalently the same circuit. I just didn't add the node names. Now let's do three. Now, even as I'm doing this, I almost accidentally drew it there. And let's talk about what that is. Now, if I tried to simulate that, Spice would just give an error. But if I built this, what I really have, are, you'd say it's a resistance equal to zero. It's not zero, but it is small, right? And the current would be the voltage divided by something very small. And so it's heading to infinity. And either one of these wires would get hot and break, or this would get hot and break, or you ruin the device. Right. That's why you have circuit breakers and things like that. So things getting hot give off a smell and so many times one of your debugging techniques is, oh, I touched it and burned myself, or I'm smelling something cooking. Right. Just as a, just a thought. That's reality. All right. So um, I'll start at the top. I'm going to stop circling those in because it just seems to be driving PowerPoint crazy. All right. So now this is why drawing the, so there's R1. There's R2. There's R3 and see how they'll be nice and compact, where if I try to do it like this, it would spread out more. Also, they, they actually fit a little better when they're on the diagonal. All right, and right, you can, you know, you can add your labels R1, R2, R3, but notice how 
you have this nice schematic, which is easy to understand, the layout starts to get um, maybe a little bit harder to understand. So the resistors of I, I, I'm gonna, so these resistors do have, you know, a physical resistor has a body and it has these tails of wires. And those tails are what gets put into these holes, all right? And so I have a wire connecting to here. And then, yeah, this is considered another wire to connect to the, like these end wires the resistors in the middle, which then there's another tail of wire. All right, then this piece of of copper wire on the board would connect to it. Did that answer your question, Luca? Okay, makes sense to me too. All right, so. There are like much, there, there are other ways to, to draw this, right? What can be helpful though is, is there's like a style that everybody follows, then it's easier to see what else, what else, somebody else's circuit is doing. All right. So again, just to get used to the idea that I can have a circuit that might look different but you can see that there's one loop, so they all must be in series. And so in fact, the picture would be the same. The layout would be the same. All right, now parallel, all right, that's a different story. I don't want it to. Actually, I don't like that. I'd rather do it like this. Okay. That way it's it's out of the way. Plus minus. All right. Now, each one of these is connected to the battery or the, the power supply. So each one of these will go to this side. And yeah, these resistors do have their own wire. So I could stick it in there directly, right? Okay, so now they are all on the same. The wire of the resistor is the wire that I'm bringing it over here, right? And then, I could just connect wires All right, now these are all connected, all right? And now I can connect to the other side, all right? Now, um, possibly another option, although it might get ugly in practice is let's say um, this was the positive and that was the negative, right? And I could try um, I put a resistor here. No, I don't like that. Well, 
where I just try to use these long wires of the resistor. to connect it. But see, I know my handwriting isn't that great, but see how my, it's getting crowded and looking funny. Even though I needed these two extra resistors, uh, two extra wires, this layout's a little bit neater. And sometimes they're in a soldering situation, there is kind of a hack where you can just take a bare wire, lay it on the back and just solder it on the underneath and then you don't have to cut wires like that all right but you can see that i'm even develop as i'm going right i'm developing a style where i like to put the power supply down here and that I'm consistently putting positive and negative like that, all right? In this case, I am going to use a wire here, right? Then I have an R1 to another common node, node two. Right, and now I have two resistors in parallel. So they're both gonna start and right. So even, even though I didn't draw this where the current can go that way, the current go that way, I drew it like this it's still equivalent, right? Now here we are on the the common node here, and then I just need a wire to connect, connect it back. All right. And these are one of those things that it just gets better with practice. Your first design, almost everybody says they hate it. Um, because it can be improved so much, but that's just life. All right, now um, let's just take a quick review, All right? Everything on these like five slots here are connected and these long ones are all connected together. And so it's almost like pre-drawing an LT spice, these wires like that. And so if I want, a whole series of resistances and right you don't have to draw it like these wires here I just did boxes right or you could do it like that um, and in this case it's assuming that I can squeeze two wires in one hole which isn't often the case and especially in the in the uh, solderless boards you can't do that but in this case, someone might think, oh, it's in series, but each one of these legs is connected to the same wire. So in fact, it's a short. All right, now let's talk about a high level design. But before we do that, are there any questions, chats? Those are all great questions. Okay, so there's a software called Fritzing, which now you have to pay for. And it's, it was great when it was free, but having to pay for it, I didn't really appreciate. Um, so really, when we do your layouts, I'll make these pictures available and then you can plan it out just by drawing when pen and paper. In fact, it's actually easier than using Fritzing, all right? But you take something here, right? This is the schematic that we're used to. That's how we teach, 
right? But then you got to build it, right? And so you have a battery. That's what the schematic looks like. But this is what it looks like physically. And that, you know, red line is the positive and that black line is the negative side of it, right? But here's something important. Here's this box. It has an input. It has a pin named adjust and it has an output pin. But this schematic isn't what it is on the layout. So um, there's something called a data sheet that tells you what the pins on the physical part are. And so it's a little bit hard for you to read and we're not using this part. So, but I'm just trying to get you the idea that pin one is adjust, V out is in the middle and V in is pin three. All right, so here's you know, this pin is on the negative side. This is VN. This creates a five volt power supply, which now this whole thing is tied to five volts. And then this is connected to ground. Bam. Now this thing is called an op amp, which we'll go over later, but it's an integrated circuit. And you have your negative, your positive and your output. Here I've shown, it shows you the power supplies, right? But when you go to put it on a board, it comes in a rectangular package and the pins are all labeled, right? It, it's this package and this flow of diagram don't match, right? And so you would add these resistors and add wires. And basically this circuit is this, this is what it is in layout. Now, um, the circuit we will ultimately be building. All right, we'll have one op amp. With positive feedback. Okay. Oops. And this is another input. So you have an input here and you have an input here, which is great because the, the analog devices kit has two function generators on it. In normal lab, you only have one per station. All right, so really we just have to do a voltage division of these two resistors, right? Add the power supplies and make sure things are connected. And yes, I like to have an LED because it'll blink off and on. And I even have a, a video of the project. I just didn't, it's on my channel. I just didn't post it. So ultimately that's what you're gonna have to do, right? Now, before we get into that, all right, what do physical things look like? So this is the diode symbol and because it's got little waves coming out of it. It's an LED. And how can you tell what's what? Well, this is the positive side. That's the negative side. And when you pick it up, one leg is longer than the other. All right. Now capacitors, they don't really have a direction, nor do resistors. So one side or the other doesn't matter. All right. However, there's some capacitors that it does matter. You need to have one side on the positive and one side on the negative. And really, if you pick up the capacitor and one leg is longer than the other, then you know you have to take that into account. If they're equal legs, you don't have to, all right? Now, resistors, and I'm not going to go over this today, it's covered by these bands, which tell you how big it is, all right? And I'm not gonna talk about that today. but. Luca was asking about, you know, here is the resistor, this boxy part, but they come with wires as well. All right. Now there's other diodes that we're not going to use that aren't light emitting and they're just a round cylinder with one um, band that is this band here. All right. So this is a particular op amp. It's not the one we're going to use. We're going to use the 1630. Now let's say you've forgotten what that is or what that. All 
All right. LT sixteen thirty data sheet. Well, because I'm always searching data sheets, it knows to look for a data sheet. All right. Tells you everything you want to know. Here's even a sample application. Here is that physical layout. Now we have the quad, the dual version, not the quad version. So we have what we've given you is an op amp with two. So even if you blow one, which is pretty hard, you've, you've got another one to work with. Other things about data sheets are all these things that tell you kind of when and where it won't work. And in most labs, they designed it to make sure that you never need to know this stuff because it's well within parameters. And the more you learn, the, the better you, you get at uh, making a realistic thing. It even tells you what's on the inside. And then there's application notes. So a lot of what I've learned about circuit design is by reading these application notes for each op amp. All right, have these, because these tend to be pretty good because they're trying to sell you the op amp. Now, this is an example that we do in 98 and it's an LED driver, but it's, we're not going to do it. Actually, let's, let's get started. Why do random examples? Okay. So I said, this is what we needed to do for the project, right? Is there's the op amp. I'm going to go over what that is later. Okay, so here's the op amp. I only need one, but I do need to supply power. Um, so what I tend to do is this is V plus. So that's, that's the power supply. The in a plus or the in a negative are these points here. So what I, I tend to do is lay out the op amp first and that's my positive supply. And then that's my negative supply. All right, so I've connected here 
in here. All right. Now, um, This gets set to ground by connecting up the kit. All right. So I have a resistor that goes from the out, right? And then gets connected to the positive, right? So it gets a little tight, but I am going to Take a resistor from here. To here. So now that's my output. That's R2. All right, now I have another resistor that in fact, is going to go to a input voltage source. All right. And that one is, I'm saying is sine. So that, oh, and actually that's R2 and that's R1. All right, so I've got the output here. All right, it goes here. And this wire here, it's already set up because the, the op amp is situated on this line. So I don't have to actually add anything, All right? And then I have this resistor here. All right? And I can make that diode connection there, right? And then what's left is this input that I've called noise, which comes in on the negative side with respect to ground. And I've just called it N. So that's pretty much it. Right now, that might not be the most efficient way. I find that uh, students have, you know, some really interesting ways of of drawing things. You know, a lot nicer than I do. Um, but that would be our bias. This would be R two. This would be R one. That would be the channel one in of the kit, that would be the channel two of the kit, and then you would monitor this channel um, from the kit and the software. Okay, so there was a question where you can buy parts. You know, DigiKey is shipping, so does Mouser. Anchor is it's a fun place to go. Halted, um, not exactly what it used to be, but they they do have things. You just you never know quite what you're going to get. And I think, I mean, they're still open, but um, Anchor's a little bit better set up for whatever you need. Um, so I know that was a lot. Okay. What, oh, let's see if we can get out of PowerPoint.
what I want to do is have you guys just build a voltage divider, right? If then we can also simulate an RC circuit and build it, right? Same with the LED, right? And this circuit is just a buffer. V out equals V in, which then will lead to the Schmidt trigger, which then leads to the project. And that, so next week, we're actually gonna be building and doing things and leading, leading up to it, all right? Now, I don't wanna hold anybody back and it's not like I'm trying to hide information, okay? Because if you want to, you you do have the ability to, you do have the kit, right? So this is the overview of the kit, tells you everything you have. What I wanted to point out is these resources. I see your, I see the chat, just oh, let me answer the chat first. Can we also use analog discovery too? Is that that kit from Digilent, Marielle? Okay. Um, I guess if you're gonna use the analog discovery, I guess I'd like the other one back. Um, I have investigated all the ways to do remote electronics education. And yeah, I tried to think about, could everybody buy used test equipment on eBay? That, that wasn't right. The analog discovery just doesn't have as many features. All right, so if you want to use it and do your own thing, you know, okay. Um, but I, but the whole project is kind of set up to easily use the, that kit. I, I, I really think the analog one is better. All right. So, tells you, you know, everything you need to know. But yeah, it's got an oscilloscope, spectrum analyzer, all of these things. But what, oh, and then here are all these lab activities on how to use it, which does assume that you bought this parts kit that, that's about $40. But you do have diodes and resistors and things like that. Here's a background, you know, the solderless breadboard, here's another way to look at it, right? Resistors, capacitors, real voltage sources. This is great, you just don't have the parts for it. But like you can look at the Ohm's law, tells you all this stuff, okay? And what are they doing? They're doing a diode. So the only difference is, um, the resistance is going to be probably different. But what they nicely do is show you the strip board and actually do the layout for you. All right. And you can go through this. So you can do these examples. And it even sh it's even showing you how to use the kit. Now, it's pretty good. But it's every once in a while, I, it seems that I have to add something. It's, it needs more. Right. But also you can kind of check out 
measuring diode characteristics and use it like a curve tracer. So if you remember, I said diodes are nonlinear and it has that exponential equation to it. Well, there's the exponential, right? And it just doesn't have the project in here, okay? And actually, actually, Marielle, all the EE labs are going to All right, can you hear me now? All right. Uh, maybe my microphone just died. So I'm just going to go over this again. This kit, right, is the one that we're going to use in, in the EE program for every analog lab. So EE97, 110 lab, 122 lab, 124 lab, 160, and 174. Um, yeah, um, yep, it has that. It's just, and that's good for them, but um the what i discovered is that the the mk2000 has a higher frequency range all right but um i really try not to control what people do or do not do um unless it's like, you know, really important. So yeah, if, if we were on my research team, yeah, and I use Python, you're gonna have to use Python. If you're on somebody else's research team and they use MATLAB, you're gonna have to learn MATLAB. And at least speaking for electrical engineering, right, you will learn both by the time you graduate, okay? But um, that was really it for uh, today's lecture. Come Monday, we're going to start building and testing. And again, some of you have like a lot more experience um, than maybe your coursework would show. You want to go and do things on your own, great. You know, I, I, while I am a controlling type personality, I do try to keep it to a minimum. So any questions? I think all that means is you heard me talking. I don't think you're actually agreeing with me. <laughs> all right. 
Um, trying to get back to my controls. All right. So it'll probably take 15 minutes to save this video and then I'll post it. Day one and three is up. Day two, it didn't record right. But we really, I really didn't talk much, at least in my mind. So it's, it's no great loss. Oh, do you have to return it? Um, it was my understanding that it was yours forever. Okay. And um, yeah, maybe I came off a little harsh against Marielle for wanting to use something different. Um, what I'll say is just try it and see. And then, you know, you can tell me what's best. Maybe, um, maybe I got the wrong one, okay? But for the EE students who are entering 110 lab, most likely it's gonna be Lent, right? So unless you're part of Summerbridge, okay? But something else, even if your major is not electrical engineering, um, a lot of the mechanical faculty thought that this was really good for what they did and even biomedical. Uh, I shouldn't, don't misunderstand the phrase even biomedical. Um, they do a lot of electrical work um, and so the kit would be really helpful for them and <laughs> it's okay Marielle I it's fine right um, but what I found is I used to have what you would call expensive test equipment right on my desktop which is I grabbed it on the way out when we were having a, a shelter in place and I didn't know when we'd be back so I took all my test equipment with me but what I found is um, I don't think I'm going back to the other stuff unless the frequency requirements are needed because it is both kits right aren't as good as a 300 gigahertz oscilloscope right um, but what I really like is I mean <laughs> sorry for being like a salesperson, but this fits in your shirt pocket. And so I'm at the dinner table doing my research on stochastic resonators, um, not while I'm eating dinner, but um, I don't have to haul out all the test equipment or get relegated to the, to the garage. But we really do going forward want you to learn um, to use traditional oscilloscopes and function generators because when you go to work, that's what you'll have. Um, and what I think is, I'm hoping at some point there's a vaccine and everybody can come back, right, to do things. But um, what I'm also thinking is that for remote learning, um, a lot of you live far away and maybe if you had the choice to do a lab remotely rather than having to drive in, it could help it could help out right but yeah you really should learn traditional test equipment before you graduate as well all right that um got a bit preachy there okay yep put the kids to work <laughs> but yeah what i'm what i'm hoping is you would have the choice <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna ask for your advice, Sophia, about how to get kids to do chores. I uh, made him think the dishwasher was a cool magic machine, and now he loads it. <laughs> That's about it. And how old is he? He's 13. He's uh, super autistic and 13. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna. See, I'll have to come up with something like that. All right. Um, but uh, thank you for chiming in. Any, are there any other comments before we sign off? No. Okay, have a good weekend, anybody. And please, you feel you can email me directly. Um, take care and stay safe. Thank you.
Are we breaking out into the uh, no, I think, um, I think you're going to work out now. Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> but if you, right. here's the thing, if you need to get caught up, get caught up. That's probably more important. You can work out later. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm all caught up. Thank you. Okay, great. I, I just right. wasn't sure if we were working. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. They're not, um, they're not waiting for you. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm not. Okay, probably. take care. Yeah, thank you. Bye. All right, bye.